Hi, I'm Cameron. And, and we're Kids. I have a carrot. <laughs> Hello, Cameron. Hello, Cameron. Hello, Cameron. Hello, Cameron. Hello, Cameron. Hello, Cameron. Hi, I'm Kristen. Hi, I'm Daisy. Hi, my name is Calissa. Hi, I'm Dahlia. Hi, I'm Jed Dodds, and welcome to the Reed Park Zoo. Today we're going to learn about the Southern White Rhino. Let's go! Wait a sec, any of you guys have a driver's license? No, let's go, come on, get out of there! Okay guys, come on in. Alright guys, so these are our two rhinos and we have one boy and one girl. This boy coming up right here, he is, his name is Zabulu. Zabulu is 38 years old right now and he's weighing about 4,500 pounds. That's a big rhino, huh? It's a big animal. And then the other one is our girl and her name is Ibanga. Ibanga is about 36 years old right now. So they're both pretty big rhinos at about 4,500 pounds. What's the difference between the white and the black rhino? Great question. The difference between the white and the black. How about how do they get their name? Because white rhino, do they look white? No. They don't really look white. They look kind of grayish, right? Well, they actually got it because of the mouth. And if you look at the mouth of this rhino, it has a very wide mouth. Now, there are two types of rhinos that live in Africa. There are the white rhinos and the black rhinos. Each one has a very specific shaped mouth. The white rhino has a very wide mouth, and it was actually a Dutch mistranslation. The Dutch word, which is widge, all right, W-I-D-J, got translated into white. So kind of interesting how they got their name. They have really poor eyesight, so they can only see about 10 yards in front of them, so they're not gonna use their eyes that much. The ears are what they're gonna use. So those ears, they can actually move independently. So uh, Ibanga right here can actually move the ear, one of them back and one of them to the front to listen to see what's going on. How thick is a rhino's skin? I don't know, you guys wanna feel it? Sure. Come on up and feel it. See how, see how thick you think it is. All right, just make sure you don't get your hand in between the bar and the body. But you guys can touch her on there. All right, pat her down. What do you think? Do you think that's uh, pretty thin? It's thick, right? But you guys are touching this. What's coming off of the rhino? Mud. Mud. Why, does, why would a rhino have mud on him? Do you think we put mud on him? No. Why do you think a rhino has mud on him? Yeah. To cool off. Ooh, to cool off. And also, flies and mosquitoes, these guys hate. And so what they'll do is they'll roll in mud, and that's kind of like a natural insecticide for the flies and mosquitoes. So it works to cool them down. It works for sunblock to protect them from the sun, and also for the flies and mosquitoes. So, it's, so mud is a really cool thing uh, that helps a rhino out to help them to survive in Africa. You guys want to see them go out on an exhibit? Yeah. All right. One of the main reasons why rhinos are, have gone endangered is because of poaching, and it's because of this horn. This is uh, the female's horn, this is Ibanga's horn, and it actually fell off, okay? So you can see that big old horn right there, that attached right there, and it fell off because she got it caught on something, and she twisted, and it popped right off. Now it hurt her a little bit, but she's okay. You can see she's okay. She's already healing. She's already starting to grow another horn. But what it does is it gives us a good example of what a horn looks like. You guys want to hold that? A couple of you guys all together hold it because it's pretty heavy. Whoa, you guys feel how heavy that is? All right, that's a heavy horn. But you guys can see how, look how there's like hair coming off of it right there. Remember, it's made of the same material as your hair, keratin, and your fingernails. So it's continually growing throughout their life. And so um, you can see how there's hair coming off. And this is what a poacher is going to go in, shoot this animal for, and is going to take off that horn. They don't eat the animal. They don't do anything with the animal. This is all they want. That's why we need to protect these animals. Because do you think it's fair that a rhino dies because of their horn? That's not really fair, right? Each one of our animals in a zoo is an ambassador for its species, for its counterpart in the wild that doesn't have a voice. You guys, by coming in and getting up close to these animals, you're having an experience. You each laid your hand on a 5,000 pound rhino. Not a lot of kids get to tell that story of coming up and working with these animals. That's a cool connection that your job now is to go out and to tell the story of these animals.